So you rate that your men? Yes. But it's still one to ten a out five. Of, out of one to ten, I would rate them a five. I'm gonna do it. Oh my god. <laughs> That's bad. How is it bad? I, I think it's better than Rochelle's. Rochelle rated a four. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right, honey. Yes, sis. That's my sister. Wait, yeah. a category? You said a category? Yeah. Let me tell you guys the category I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for a free thinker. Okay. A Ghanaian who hates American culture, who hates white men, who knows that the colonizers are evil devils who have come to destroy the planet. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone who is getting in touch with their... Um, their ancestral spiritual practices, who who does not worship money, but who 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 loves interacting with yeah. humanity and not money. I think you're describing a black American. I, I, I noticed it as a, and I, I was even gonna say somebody who has locks, but y'all don't do locks here, so never mind. N- never mind. Just, I think you, you don't even have Rastafarians here. Kind of. But it's not that kind of lock you're talking about. No, it's not. It's locks to the, the rest of them. Okay, okay. I think I've seen a homeless man with locks. <laughs> 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 Hello and welcome back again to another episode. My name is Hayford. If you don't know who I am, I am a content creator, a cinematographer. I have started interviewing people who transitioned from the diaspora to Ghana or living in Ghana right now. You know, to bring you the juicy stuff, how is their daily life here in Ghana? Or, you know, why they even decided to come here in the first place? So if you want to enjoy, stay tuned. Have you been in Ghana? I have been in Ghana for a little over a year. So a about year. a year and four months, maybe? A year and three months? Okay. Okay. My question after the first one was, did you know anyone here in Ghana before trying to move back? Since you said your grandmother? Uh, your son's grandmother. Yes. But then, didn't you have a, a stereotype of what Africa looks like, you know, being an American woman? Because of course. Because there's a lot, you know. There, There is definitely a programming that is like a blanket mm-hmm. that every American absorbs right. being an American. Mm-hmm. Misconceptions of Africans. Right. So, but me, I uh, consider myself privileged because I grew up in a home where... Africa was looked at as like the promised land, oh, wow. and it was just yeah, it was it was just so you Africa's just, it. Like I always wanted to come to Africa. I always wanted to move to Africa, even as I when I was a little kid. So um, the fact that I'm here now is just you know me hearing that from you doesn't it doesn't compute because me as a child. America, of course. Canada is the way. That I is. Be, I want to go to America so bad. That is so troubling, to right? Me. So me hearing you saying Africa is is, is is the place to be is a paradise. It doesn't compute. Uh, you have to you have to understand. Most Black Americans right. in America are suffering mm. from systemic racism, uh, institutionalized racism, okay. and uh, abort. O- overt racism and the passive aggressive microaggression okay. like all at all fronts we're suffering constantly mm-hmm. like many pe- black people we can't get loans from banks to buy a home so we're not building generational wealth it's, wow. it's, it's so much it's such an assault on our physical spiritual and psychological like um, a lot of black neighborhoods are in what they call food deserts where there's not fresh food there's not good food that you can get wow. So like we're we are suffering, yeah. but but like so that's why it troubles me so much when I hear the average African wanting to go to the yes. West and uh, worshiping mm-hmm. Western culture is right. just sickening to me. So are you saying you've been lied to? Yes. Really? Absolutely lied <laughs> to. Absolutely. This is propaganda. I know someone watching is is preparing to comment down below. You don't know what you're oh talking about. Oh my God. America is America. They, so Ghanaians will tell me I don't know what I'm talking about as an American. They want to okay. go and find out for themselves. So. Okay. But I mean, it, coming from coming that coming from you makes me kind of question myself. What kind of home did you grow up in, mm-hmm. right? And making you be more you know, educated about Africa because mm-hmm. most people have stereotypes like Africa is a very you know poor place to be. Mm-hmm. But then you see Africa to be a paradise. What was your mom? Or how did it come about for you to be more educated um, about Africa? My mom went to several countries in Africa by the time I was 11. My grandfather, he visited pretty much all over Africa. So I only heard good things about Africa. 
And I only saw the people that I looked up to mm -hmm. and adored and who adored me wanting to go to Africa. Oh, wow. So my grandfather, he would go to Africa like almost every year. Like he, he was he was a, um, a passionate mm -hmm. lover of African culture. And I would be in his house in the summers. We would go to his house in the summers and African art everywhere. everywhere. African clothes everywhere. So we just grew up. And we just grew up in that in that culture of love love for Africa. And my mother, um, she didn't go as many times, but she really instilled in us of uh, the power mm -hmm. of the melanated being, okay. the um, the the love of of our royalty. Mm -hmm. So we grew up, we grew up thinking every African was royalty. Oh yeah, That's, you know, the <laughs> coming to America. I don't know if y'all seen coming to America. Yeah, I've seen that. We literally <laughs> saw Africa like that. At least I did. I can't. But I think even, it's true though. Most, most Africans. Yeah, we, we kind of we kind of have that idea. But the monarch system is dead now. But it before, almost every village have a king and then a praise. Yeah, yeah. But then there's also this cognitive dissonance right. that happens when we get the programming from mainstream America okay. about Africa. Mm -hmm. So we also had this 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 conflicting and contradicting idea of Africa. It's like everybody's in huts. There's lions, <laughs> tigers, and bears. Like even now, like when I post something. Um, they's like, oh, do you have like wild animals having an issue? No, <laughs> I'm in the city, nigga. Like, what do you yeah. mean? Like, right? <laughs> like, like, so but, you know, I know your mom and dad knew better. They've they've traveled Africa before, right? Mm -hmm. But what about the friends? Your friends mm -hmm. that they didn't know anything about Africa. How did they react? You know, to you, you saying you're going to um, Africa for the first time? Uh, I think in the last 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. A lot of interest has come up um, with Africa because of the internet. Okay. Um, so a lot of people were with it. You know, they was like, "Oh, I want to go, I want to go." Because it's trending. Um, loving our blackness is trending. Okay. So that's what's trending. Okay. So the ultimate loving your blackness is living in Africa. Okay. That you know. So that's like the ultimate. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's what's trending. So. Africa, I think there's still a lot of misconceptions and negative um, connotations surrounding Africa and African people. And I've even noticed it, the programming in myself, mm -hmm. coming here. I didn't know that I had it, but you know, it would come out when I first came here. So, you know, that's everywhere in America. Like, mm -hmm. no one, that's like, no white person can escape racism. Racism is like a blanket culture that every white person absorbs. Yes. Every person in America is gonna, um, absorb that negative you know idea of Africa because you know discovery channels we see people living in huts flies all over the head you know that's all we yes. that's all we see that's the visual we see you know so that's just programming but most of my friends they were like oh yeah cool, cool, cool. I want to go to Africa blah 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 so um yeah so you are here did you have any extraordinary expectations before getting here oh, and did Ghana meet your expectations I had such expectations of the African man, mm -hmm. Africans. Mm -hmm. um, African men? Yeah, uh -huh. particularly. Uh -huh. I thought that they were just like so royal oh. and, and mature <laughs> and, and holy even. Um, Are you yeah, talking about West African men or the whole of Africa? All because of Africa. Bear in mind, because West Africa, actually the men from Ghana, as the most faithful man in the whole of West Africa. <laughs> I don't know who told you that lie. I don't know it's who told internet. you that lie. The internet lies. Okay. Hey, for so it. It. Oh my god. <laughs> ah. No. Um, yeah. I, I was. I was tremendously disappointed. Like very much disappointed. Tell me that. why. What happened? Oh my god. Just, just, just sprinkle. A some sprinkle. Little. Yes. Um, I find most. Ghanaian man. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have. It's hard for me to respect the average Ghanaian man. No. Because the average Ghanaian man worships Western culture. They want to be just like the white man. Oh, really? They think white people are cool. They have no mm -hmm. issue with white people. They they they're perfectly okay mm -hmm. with white people running the world, and they want to be like white. They aspire to be like white people. They aspire to get money and. And um, 
the majority of their conversation is about money and the majority of their self-esteem is, is surrounding money. money. And it's, oh. it's just, it's hard for me to respect yeah. that as a black American coming from, uh, you know, America and how awakened most black Americans uh, are regarding yeah. the colonizers of the planet, the literal destroyers of the planet. And then I come here and I have such, these, such high expectations for these Ghanaian men and, and most of them have the same aspirations and it's centered around Western culture. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard for me to respect mm -hmm. the Ghanaian men here because oh. of that. And they want to be so proper and, and a lot of them are Christian. That's the white man's religion. Mm -hmm. Like, Why would yeah. we worship yeah. what these devils are worshiping <laughs> and what they forced yeah. down our throats when they came and colonized our countries? Yeah. Like it's, it blows my mind. Yeah. But I mean, somewhere Ooh. I understand, you know, that's how they grew up, you know. Okay. Being being in Ghana, I think the females were brought up to, you know, you know, what I'm saying, be prepared for oh, a man. Too. But I think it's different culture when you're coming from America and seeing that. And then I think I'll talk briefly about you, you know, falling in love with a Ghanaian, right? I don't know if you're still married or you said you broke up, right? So you've tried dating since you came to the country, mm -hmm. right? Now I want to give you. I think I had an interview with. Uh, Rochelle, I don't mm -hmm. know if you know her. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I told her to rate Ghanaian men. So, oh. um, based on what you just said right now, oh, I want you to just rate Ghanaian men on a scale of 1 to 10, taking into consideration, consideration of what you just mentioned. Y'all, don't. What do you <laughs> don't come for me. No. Don't, no. I just want to be honest. Do not come for me. No. I love y'all. Mm -hmm. But. <laughs> oh, most Ghanaian men are. Uh, Shorts, tights, yeah, <laughs> oh no, and they're thin, they're like really little, <laughs> they're little men, yeah. and a lot of Ghanaian men bleach their skin, oh, and that man. blows my like. I think it's how it's, you not love your melanin? That's, that's yeah. weird to me, like the blacker the berry, mm -hmm. the sweeter the juice. The, <laughs> the, the more dark skin you are, the more beautiful you are oh, to yeah. most people mm -hmm. in the world. Well, not in the world, I can't say that. But to most black Americans, like the darker you are, like even like there's this trend about us dissing light skinned men in America. Like, we don't want no light skinned dude. Like, no, we want a dark skinned dude. Yeah. Why? What's wrong? Just because they're not black enough? <laughs> we just don't, they're not attractive. Um, they act different. They act more like uppity, like more white. Yeah culture we don't like white culture we don't like none of that oh, so we like a man as you know, pretty and dark i love i love a, yeah. a highly medic melanated man but i think so. most black most guys i don't know it's my first time hearing it but they are black i don't know if most men men. yeah yeah of course of course right. but but the fact that some bleach their skin is oh, yeah, like disgusting to me yes. so for that i would have to rate Ghanaian men based on only that no, not just dating that. Oh my wise. God. Oh my god, dating wise. Caring. Caring. All of it is mm -hmm. I can go on and on about the issues I have. Just to... just give me the number. No, don't, don't be scared. Okay. Nobody's gonna come for you. I'm scared though. Behave in the comment section below I'm... if y'all watching this. Behave. <laughs> I, I find most Ghanaian men when they get angry, they get really petty. Oh yeah. And I don't like that. Oh. And then I, I also see a lot of Ghanaian men they're weak in moral character. Mm -hmm. So like they, they don't have a strong moral backbone. In spite of based their on your strong, based on my experience, in spite of their strong Christian background, mm -hmm. they don't. They always want to cheat me out of money or or try to, you know, yeah. just that. I, 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 I cannot stand it. That's like, <laughs> I I um I just had to recently let go of, um, of a friend. Just a friend. Yeah, he, he he's married. Oh. So I was I was friends with him and his wife, but that weak moral backbone, like trying to get over on people and try to like get more money out of people. It's, right. money, it's all about money, money, money. Right. That's disgusting to me. So based on mm -hmm. all of that, mm -hmm. and then more, I won't add. Yeah. I would have to rate Kanye, <laughs> man. I feel bad. <laughs> um, Let's hear it. Okay, let me just say this. Let me not give you a number. Let okay. me just say, white man is at the bottom. <laughs> Asian man. Yeah. Ghanaian man. Okay. And then African American man. That's my preference. No okay. Way. What? No How is that way. bad? That's Are you good. Sure? That's so, good. I prefer so. African American man to Ghanaian man. That's normal. I'm African American woman. Okay. How is that bad? I understand that bias. 
I do understand, but I mean, you guys know that that's not the truth, okay? We are on top as Ghanaians, the people of the West Africa. Faithfulness. Karen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just brushed out. <laughs> I'm just trying to help us. So, oh, you've been here so far, right? I've never seen a Ghanaian man faithful to his wife here. Really? Ever. Ever. Polygamy. Polygamy. Say that louder. Polygamy <laughs> is rampant. Okay, so let me know your and the wives are unaware. Uh, that is not faithfulness. Let me know your opinion about polygamy. <laughs> I think polygamy is extremely natural for men. Mm -hmm. Biologically. African men or all men? All men. <laughs> Biologically, man produce new sperm daily oh. that means they're meant to bust a nut oh, okay. daily okay at this point uh, if you are below 18 years you should <laughs> <laughs> uh, well so you understand why men would go for me to put absolutely but my issue is when you don't tell the woman okay. you don't tell the woman that's selfish so what makes a difference you knowing about it and you know well it's sexual assault when i don't know about it okay. because when you have sex with people you not only are at risk for getting sexually transmitted diseases, you are at risk for inheriting their ancestral traumas, okay. inheriting their um, their different moods and, and um, you know um, bad behaviors like energetically. It's an energetic exchange when you have sex with somebody. So when you have sex with other women and you come back and have sex with me, I I pick up all of that energy that you're picking up and you're not telling me about. That one is deep. I still don't understand. I, I have picked up so many, I call them spiritually STDs from men going out. And it weakens your um, life force energy. Okay. You come back and you, you're weaker. Your energy is weaker because you busted nuts in so many different women. And you're giving so many different women your energy. I understand. So I don't, I, don't, I think it's, it's important that, that you have an open, honest communication with your woman. And if your woman's not for it, you get a new woman. But let's say, let's say he just come like, honestly, I've been dating you for two, three years. Mm -hmm. I think I want to spice something up. I want to add plus one. Realistically, are you going to say yes to it? Absolutely. Are you sure? Absolutely. I actually told my um, ex-husband this, but he chose to go out and cheat. Oh, okay. Because that's what got me in man deep. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. That's what that got me so, in man deep. I mean, you've been on a continent. I don't know if I asked you already. Mm -hmm. Try dating. Mm -hmm. Now, Ghanaian men who were born here, grew up here, have never tra traveled out. Have mm -hmm. you dated men like that? And yes. also those who grew up in the diaspora. Yes. What do you think is the difference based on your experience? Um, I think um, I'm going to get in trouble. No, I'm gonna, no, I'm going to get brutalized for this in the no. comments. I think the main difference is men who grew up here, mm -hmm. they lack the ability to criti critically think. Mm, yes. Men who travel to the um, to different and grow up there. places and grow up there, they develop that ability to critically think, think for themselves even. Because here, I think the um, the way that um, Ghanaian children learn is they learn by um, like if you, you can't get it, you have to do it the exact same way, and you can't like think outside okay. and or come to conclusions on your own. And if you get like an answer wrong, you get. Tapped or, or hit or something, and that turns on your fight or flight, mm -hmm. which turns off your prefrontal cortex, mm -hmm. which is the area That's of the brain okay. that jump that critically thinks, that um, forms you know conclusions, and it's literally the thinking part of your brain. It I shuts say it off. The education system that is making them think. Absolutely. Okay. When when you get hit and then I'm learning, you this you're doing the opposite of learning. You're turning on your fight or flight, and when you're on your fight or flight. Biologically, your prefrontal cortex shuts down so that you can survive. But in a school setting, it, when it shuts down, you're not able to learn or think for yourself or form your own opinions or none of that. So wow. I think that's that's the main difference that I noticed. And they all, like the Ghanaian men who never traveled outside of Ghana, they all think the same, all say the same things on a date, think the same, mm -hmm. act the same way, have the same interests, and are obsessed with money. The money part is... is <laughs> It's everywhere in Africa. The new guy. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this. What do you like being on the continent here in Ghana? What do you like so far? Give me three best things you like being on the continent. Um, I love that I get to be around my son oh, okay. all the time. Mm -hmm. I, that's my favorite part about Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, I love um, the peace. Mm -hmm. 
the, the, the type of peace that comes here. And that's what I don't understand. Like, I hear all of these rumors about all these crimes, but I've never, I've never witnessed any it's of them. Done, right? Yeah, and the people are so nice and sweet and um, helpful. And um, yeah, I love that. And I love um, how uh, communal you guys are. You guys yeah. are just like you can stop at a red light and talk to the other the driver. driver. <laughs> what? What? If you try to crap in America, you so, man, listen. Someone just pull that gun on you. I think so. No. Say it again. Someone just pull that gun on you. Like, why are you trying to talk to me? Yeah, yeah. They, they look at you like you're crazy, or they raise up their window like, what the hell is wrong with you? Y'all don't know you. Why are you mm-hmm. talking to me? Mm-hmm. But like here, you can just be like, hey, you know, you talk think about because of that lifestyle we have as community, that's that reduce anxiety and depression is completely to the US. Absolutely. That's- I, I believe so. I think that um, America is a very indi- individualistic culture. Mm-hmm. So everybody's used to doing things on their own, being on their own. So like when I first came here, it was so hard for me to accept the kindness and the help. Kind of to know the know your gods, would you say? Or, yeah, and, and just not do everything myself. Like all my Ghanaian friends was like, yo, you need help finding an apartment. You need help. I'm like, I can do this myself. I can do this because I'm just so used to doing yes. things myself. And a lot of my Ghanaian um, friends, they took that as, as as an offense. Yes. Like, oh, you don't want my help, or you don't want our help. Like, it's just very uncomfortable for me to to accept help when I first came here. Now it's you know a little easier for me to ask you know for help from the neighbors or whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I think absolutely it has a lot to do with mental health, um, especially when you have someone constantly. Like the average Ghanaian, they have someone. That can just they can call to help. Hey, I'm stranded. Can you come help me? Yeah. Or hey, I'm I'm in trouble. I have no money. Can you you know send me somewhere? The average guy even has that. You don't have that in America. No. Everybody's self sufficient. Oh my god! <laughs> and self centered and selfish. And, yeah. So let's let's talk a little about the negative part. I don't think it's all roses. You've experienced. Uh, you've been here for almost a year, right? Mm-hmm. What are some things that you don't like? And if you have the chance to change it, you will change. it. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Can we go three? Three things. They're negative, negative. Oh. not too good. You wish it would change. <laughs> if you have ideas on how um, you can, you know, we can change that so we can check it in there. Um, Maybe three is too much too. <laughs> uh, the average, not the average, I wouldn't say the average, but a lot of Ghanaians that I've met are kind of like slow. Slow? Like, laid back? No, no, like in thinking like they don't jump to conclusions quick enough like um like when i get in an uber they wait and then they ask me oh please can i start <laughs> why would you ask me that why don't you, I'm, I'm in the car no i just want to sit here and stare at you that's what i want to do i just want to sit here and stare at you that's like i don't get this be nice I why think. that's that's not my, i don't i don't get it or like <sighs> or like um, they ask me for directions. Like you have a map right there. Just look at the map and just go with the map. Like you don't have to. Like I feel, I feel like that's slow in thinking yeah. and, and coming to conclusions. Yeah. And I have so many um, examples of that, but I'll, I'll, I'll move on. But yeah. I, I think that I would change that. Mm-hmm. How, do you, how do you? How would you change that? That's the school system, the education okay. system. We got to start at the roots. Like um, let these kids be. Mm-hmm. Like I noticed that a lot of um, Ghanaian parents are with their children. They're really like, mm-hmm. I don't know, like they they rear them like cattle, kind of. Like, yeah. Oh, you have to do this. You have to go. Oh no, 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 dad, no. Like don't cry. Like, don't do this. Principles. Yeah, and and it's it's not allowing them to be creative and the and the um and it's not giving them confidence in their own thinking, okay. like confidence in their own thoughts, in their own opinions. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 a um. What do you call that? It's a uh, autonomy issue with the children, okay. and I feel like those those children that don't uh, get comfortable in their own autonomy, they grow up to be these people who don't know how to like. They have to ask on every turn, like, "Oh, please, mm-hmm. da, da, da. Mm-hmm. like, no, you can you can think for yourself and, mm-hmm. and come to conclusions for yourself. You don't have to ask for my okay." input. So I said two, right? Now, based on what you've told me so far about Ghanaian men, I would ask you, would you advise anyone 
black American. I found a Ghanaian love. I want to love this man. I want to marry him. Give best third advice to that person thinking. Um, My best friend. Should they go for it? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, two of my um, closest friends mm. are um, engaged to a Ghanaian man. Right. They're happy, 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 happy. Um, the advice I would give is understand that we are from two different worlds, two different countries. Mm -hmm. So black people, we value honesty, assertiveness over being polite. Mm. So in a relationship, when we're comfortable with you, we're less polite. To a Ghanaian, that's disrespectful and that's rude and, and, and it, you can be too forward when you're too honest. So like, hey babe, you left this um, these, these dishes on the sink. I need you to come get them. Instead of being so forward, because uh, they, they may take offense to that, you be like, hey babe, um, is it okay if we maybe just clean up after? You know, like you have to, you have to come sideways with stuff like that and so that's what I know it's like pretty much all of my friends here from America they're with Ghanaian men Ooh. yeah so I, I noticed like how many issues like that <laughs> five five yeah so five. now guys you understand when I say Ghanaian men are the best men in the whole of West Africa right because look it's, it's bittersweet with Ghanaian men you say oh my god Maybe, you know, Maybe. I mean, th there's a lot of sweet Ghanaian men. So, like, I like my um, friends' fiancés. They're very sweet. They're very kind. It's just, you know, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Don't, don't think it's a fairy tale. You know, you come in here, you are clashing with cultures. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the cultures, the opposite. <clears throat> um, oh, one advice I would give to Ghanaian men okay. who are dating men? Ghanaian men who are dating American women okay. is serious. drop the admiration for Western culture oh. and white man. Drop that. We can't stand it. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh but is it God. just the money? Oh, I think it's not just the money. money. It's the attitude. It's the. Um, it's. Uh, it's. I. I can go so deep into it. Let's go. Okay, maybe not too much. Yeah. Let's not too much. Let's Let's just drop one thing. Everything about the Western culture, like. Yeah. Because that's what I wanted to do. That there's a lot of diasporans moving back. Mm -hmm. Okay, a lot from the UK, the US, Canada, and everyone. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, they're going to settle down here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And then this is different culture. We have Ghanaians mm -hmm. who grow up here and never travel. Mm -hmm. Their mindset is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to, you know, kind of speak to people who have experienced it. Where do you think we can meet halfway and, you know, just you know, settle down together as. You know, people, Ghanaians who have never traveled in the express because I don't think we should just give up that I'll never date an uh, American, Afri African American because our culture is not the same. Mm -hmm. So we have to meet at a certain point. So I mean, throwing some advice there. What do you think should change that would make it easier for you know the two can you know just get along with us? Yeah. Um, I think on both ends we need to understand each other. So understand that when a a black woman or even a black man than right. an African woman when when we are forward and up front it's not we're not trying to be rude we're not trying to be disrespectful we're just being and I think like we as um, black Americans we need to understand that that is considered rude and disrespectful and maybe change our tone a little right. bit and try to speak around it but all the times we're not going to be able to speak around it because that's just our culture we, we were raised okay. to be up front and right. look people in the eye when we speak mm -hmm. to them and stuff like that so like there's a lot of um, uh, things that that come off as aggressive and rude. Yeah, aggressive. I that, that aggressive part. Yeah, that we both need to understand that that's just our culture. Like me speaking like this can be seen. Like if I'm speaking to somebody, yeah, it can be seen as aggressive. rude and aggressive. And and I'm not about no. to um mute myself for anybody. Because we can't see that. This is why I'm not dating currently. Okay. Like I need oh, so you're single. I. <laughs> I just don't have the time or patience mm -hmm. to to um, yeah. to numb my or dumb myself down right. to try to you know fit into a relationship. Like I I really admire and love my black culture, mm -hmm. and I am not willing to compromise at this time in my life. Mm -hmm. But for those people who are willing to compromise, that's one thing we you you need to realize that you're gonna have to you know change the way you speak. Like even if I'm like in a store and I'm asking somebody for help. I have to change the way 
I speak. I don't want to do that every day of my life. That's why I'm single. Like, yeah. yeah. So you don't like saying, please, please, please. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. Oh my God. I, I I go like this every time I have to every time I have to text somebody like uh, do you know um, in Ghana we have a, a tribe if they if they want to even insult you they have to say please <laughs> oh, kill me out oh my god this is crazy okay so what, based on what you just said you you went on a date with a Ghanaian okay who pays the first date who pays because you you I mean look you it depends on what I order. Because when, uh, sometimes when I order a lot, I'm like, I'll pay. Because I already know, right. like, it, this is this is insane. Mm-hmm. I ordered four desserts here. Right. Like, let me just pay. Right. But um, for the most part, you know, the Guardians pay. Okay. But you think it, it's, you accept that? Because then back home, I think, from what the impression I get on TV, most American women would like to own the, you know, just, I got it. No, no, that's a misconception. Are you sure? I don't know who you talking to. Okay, we like our meals paid for in America, okay. also. Okay. And and if if it's a first date mm-hmm. and he asks me, okay. I would be offended if he doesn't pay. Mm-hmm. Like how dare you not pay? If you asking me out, if you're asking me out, you pay. Mm-hmm. That's it. Okay. That's see. Interesting. But I still don't like it. You didn't rate the Ghanaian man. I needed a number. Okay, um, Ghanaian man. Rating. You can't say nine because they're like, very, very. I can say I'm not going to be angry, but I if you don't say ten, I mean, <laughs> nine, we can take that right now, right? <laughs> no, I've seen some very physically attractive Ghanaian men. Mm-hmm. I just don't go up to them because I know there's going to be like the same. The, you know they're gonna. Uh, mm. <laughs> I think I think I'll have to introduce you to someone very well. I'm just kidding. Her social media will be on the screen. If you think you fit in the category, okay, you oh know God. what to do. Okay, now let's move a little bit, you know, far. You Wait, a category? You said a category? Yeah. Let me tell you guys the category I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for a free thinker. Okay. A Ghanaian who hates American culture, who hates white men, who knows that the colonizers are evil devils who have come to destroy the planet. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone who is getting in touch with their um, their ancestral spiritual practices, who who does not worship money, but who 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 loves interacting with yeah. humanity and not money. I think you're describing a black American. I, I, I noticed it as a, and I, I was even gonna say somebody who has locks, but y'all don't do locks here, so never mind. Ne- never mind. Just, I think you, you don't even have Rastafarians here. Okay. But it's not that kind of lock you're talking about. No, it's not. It's locks to the Rasta man. Okay, okay. Yeah. I think I've seen a homeless man with locks. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, I'm joking. I, I've seen, I've seen Ghanaian men. You're gonna go into Very few Ghanaian men with locks. But really, it's not a lie. All right. I mean, listen. You've you've had the description. If you fit, just slide in the DM. So are you open to date? You said you are tired. But why though? Because Ghana is, is amazing. We have yes. like 15 regions. Where have you been so far since you moved? Just Accra. Just Accra. So imagine you missing out on 40 mm-hmm. regions. Mm-hmm. Accra is not, it's not Ghana. And I'm I don't know. I I'm just tired. Like mm. like my my biggest pet peeve is when they ask me how I'm doing. How are you? The same Good thing morning. again. It's the same thing again and again. It drives me. So I just I just ghost them after a while. Yeah. It's unfortunate. I'm sorry. Ghanaian men, please do better. <laughs> okay. All right, let's move Let's move a little bit far. Okay, you've been here. You've seen how the system is. Mm-hmm. What kind of business ideas do you think, if anyone trying to move from the diaspora should, you know, to Ghana, should indulge in would make profit or would succeed? Three businesses. That's what I normally ask, you know, diasporans on my show. As a gift, mm-hmm. you've stated, you've seen people, your friends are great businesses. Right. Bakery. Bakery. Okay. Yeah. Bakery in general. Or yeah. Uh, 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 if you're coming, you mean from the West? Coming from the West? Yeah. Any yeah. business they can It's do. very hard to find like American desserts here. So a bakery. Okay. I would go to y'all every day <laughs> to get some American desserts. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? The next thing. Do, 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 do. Um, uh, I had ideas. I'm like, I literally think really? about this all the time. I, I, I had 
it's food. Most people that I interview say food. I don't, uh, what do you think about um, that? Yeah, food. How, is how, how, how often do you eat food from America? Like what you are used to? How often do you eat since you came to Canada? I eat very often. Right. Like um, my homeboy Telly, he just opened up a, um, a jerk soul and a yari for mom. Okay. And I, I go there all the time. Mm -hmm. Like so, yeah, food very profitable, very profitable. Mm -hmm. But um, I think schools, schools. like a. Uh, um, uh, like a nursery or kindergarten? Nah, um, high school? No. Because you know high school is just only government, right? Unless it's private and it's too expensive. Yeah. No, like a um, a school that teaches you about esoteric things. So an esoteric mm -hmm. university mm -hmm. for children. For children. Yeah. How can like, I do this for children? What? Well, it's an esoteric. Universe. I still don't understand. Explain that. Esoteric is like um, study of spirits, um, study of energy, study of your chakra system, study of like um, teaching you how to do Reiki, teaching you how to astral project. Like just yeah, I think I, I like saw that. your rings. I wanted to just speak a little about that. They look very beautiful. Thank you. And what is it that you do? Do you do that just for fun or you bought it? Or... No, so these are gifts it. actually. These okay. are gifts, and they each have their own purpose. So it's all about the astroturing things. Yeah, it's not all about it, but like, um, like this one calms me. This one opens up my heart chakra. Okay. Okay. I'd like to ask more later after the interview. Off camera. Okay. So, for the advice for business, mm -hmm. what would you like to add as a third one? Um, a third one is like make like a a station for expats to come immediately and be it with another expat to give them actual advice rather than getting advice from these opportunistic Ghanaians who take advantage of expats. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's free ideas, okay? You guys are not paying for this. I give it for free. Make sure you're taking notes. Now let's go a little bit about food. You've been here for almost one year. Oh, what? Over one year. Over one year. What is your favorite Ghanaian Dish. Oh my god. Red red. Red red. 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 Wow. I can't eat it anymore because I gained so much weight. So I just <laughs> eat it all the time. And I think it's the fried plantain. So you just eat the red bread. red. That's it all with the red and beans. Yeah. Okay, go back. Okay. Yeah. You know that out there. Got it. That's what I mean. Go Z O B E. Go back. Yeah. That was good. Go back. Wow. So okay. you've been eating that a Oh my god. I, I stopped. I stopped because I, I have to lose weight. Oh really? But yeah. Whatever. Yeah. You don't like fufu? Yuck. Bangu? Yuck. Watch it? Yuck. Oh my god. No, I like watch it. You like watch Kinda. it? Kinda. But not. Watch it's under underrated. What do you say? Mm -hmm. Compared to Jollof Rice. I think it's like overrated. Watch it? Watch it. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I think it's definitely overrated. Compared to what? Jollof is overrated. No. Jollof is amazing. Especially Ghanaian jollof. I taste the Nigerian and Ghanaian jollof. I have to stop before I get in trouble. <laughs> Watch it, it's just mushed up beans and rice. Like, it's not overrated, it's just beans and rice. Like, it's okay. okay. And fufu is disgusting, sorry. Oh, you feel like you tried it? I'm trying it. It tastes like nothing. With a soup, light soup? Yes, but fufu, meat. but fufu by itself, it tastes like nothing. Okay, yeah. But you, you don't have to eat it. Just by itself. I How know you eat it. You have to eat it with this, but it doesn't make any sense to me okay. because if it tastes like nothing, why am I eating? And the texture going down my throat. Like they don't want me to chew it. They just want me to swallow so it. Like, like, like the texture. Most people love it though. I don't. That's odd. I don't know why. So before, <laughs> before we, we sign off, um, people want to move back from the U.S. Mm -hmm. U.K. You know, not because these people want to feel it, spiritual spirituality, and you know, yeah. get being told to go back to Africa. Mm -hmm. People actually want to come do business, right? Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to them before you know coming here? But the advice I would give you if you are moving back mm -hmm. is to adjust your expectations. Mm -hmm. Understand that this is a developing country. Right. This is not America. Mm -hmm. You would not be as comfortable as you was in America. Um, like, you just have to be okay with that. You have to radically accept that. Um, 
another um, advice is find your community ASAP because it can get very, very lonely because this is a different country. So the way that we speak is not the way that they speak. So it's going to be a lot of miscommunication, a lot of misunderstandings, and it can get very lonely very quick. So find your community. Oh, and that's another idea. Yeah. Start a, um, like a, a cult, not a cult. <laughs> Start like a, a church, but not like, you know, a Christian church, but start like a black church. That's another idea for um, expats, like start like an expat church okay. where people can come and like worship. We have plenty of that already. <laughs> not worship white Jesus. Let's get that clear. Okay. Not worship this colonizes God, but like um, our spiritual practice, because most expats that come here are not Christian. No. We are, um, we've tapped into our ancestral uh, spiritual practices. You know, we interact with our, we contact or commune with our ancestors, mm -hmm. we, you know, we do spiritual practices that's, you know, comfortable for us. So start a place like that, that we can go and, and worship in our way. Okay. Because a lot of the expats here worship in, in closets or, you know, behind closed doors mm -hmm. by themselves. Because wow. there's no place. There's no place to do that. Yeah. Okay. So I should do that, actually. Yeah, you should. Let me start so, a church. That's what I wanted to ask you. So. You, do you, do you plan on, you know, indulging in any kind of business whilst you're here? Or you have, and I have no idea, what do you do, actually? Okay, so um, I am a spiritual advisor, okay. a healer. Um, most of my clients are in the States. Okay. Um, I want to expand here, but I'm, I'm honestly terrified. I got called <laughs> a devil worshiper. Oh, really? By one of my neighbors. Last oh. time I even, like, talked about it, so... Really traumatizing. Yes. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. That's that's the, the critical thinking you were talking about. Yeah, and the Christian programming. You know, I don't blame them. You know, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. Colonialization is, um, and that's another thing I understood coming here. I didn't understand it fully until I came here. The effects after the effects of post-colonial, like oh my god, I I had no idea. They were so strong, mm -hmm. so strong here. So I don't blame you know. Yeah. Any Christians. But anyway, um, I am a spiritual advisor. I do healing work, um, like energy. I'm into the esoterics. And like, so let's say someone watching right now on the continent came from the diaspora, who wants a sister, you know, to you know join and worship. Can they call you? Can they text you? Yeah, I would love that. Yeah. I, would love, I miss us. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to leave her Instagram and her socials on the screen. You never know. You have a lot of people trying to, you know, contact you. <laughs> so contact her, you know, come let's worship together. <laughs> no, I teach you how to see auras and energy around people. Uh -huh. And I clear your aura. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Just thank so wonderful. You. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And yes, one more time, she moved back from the U.S. to Ghana without knowing anybody here, anybody. right? But only her son. Mm -hmm. Now she's here with her son, happily, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You say. Yeah. So, um, if you want to enjoy interviews like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like, share to friends and family, and stay tuned for more amazing content coming your way. And yes, let's say bye. Bye. Bye.